Hi and welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is Forced Focus by Richard Pinner. Before I continue with the review, can you please do me some favours? They're very important. I'd like you to do them now. Can you please like and subscribe? That's important. Hit the little bell icon. That's also important because sometimes I go live, but importantly, sometimes I can't on a Thursday at five o'clock and I need to be able to let you know so you don't turn up. And uh, do have a look at cardmagiccourse.com. We're all very proud of it. It's very, very special. It's getting even more special. I'm putting new footage on pretty much every week now. Um, and the live sessions are just brilliant. We're getting guests on. Uh, we've got Fanique coming up next month. We've got Vinny Sagu uh, tomorrow. But that will be irrelevant if you're watching this in three days' time or even a year. But it will be up on the site anyway, so go and join carmagiccourse.com. If you like this, you will love that because it's all me teaching you stuff and waffling on quite a lot as well. Uh, so have a look at that. Right, another thing I wanted to say actually was th this channel is not just about products okay it's it, the products are used as a, as a i mean it's great to review stuff and i'm very lucky and i get some lovely magic but it's not about finding things to kind of dislike and things like that. it's about talking about magic and and learning kind of between the lines of what i'm saying so the products give us a sort of gateway into conversation so if you see stuff on the channel you think well i don't really want to know about that magic trick i suggest watching it anyway because there's lots of hidden stuff in there i do tend to go off on little tangents and that's kind of the point so uh so do have a look at all the videos. That'll be lovely. Um, right, this is a, this came out when in, in the kind of, so I'm, I'm, I've had it a while, but I've I'm kind of, I got it a little bit later as well, after the kind of whole Zoom thing was really kicking off. So we're sort of out of lockdown now. Um, I didn't get any footage of doing this because people at the moment are very nervous about COVID. Yes, we're out of lockdown, but loads of people are getting it. We're coming into winter in the UK and people are feeling a bit edgy about it so i don't feel that comfortable going out and filming with people because i know that people aren't just at the moment it's it's very odd so uh, but i have done it i've performed it i've shown it to friends and things like that i just think didn't, didn't get the footage uh so i've got a feel of of how realistic this is to perform and the good news is it's very realistic so do me a favor can you just cut the pack great and just um Put the card down there. So what's going to happen is I'm going to go through the cards like this and I want you to try and spot one. Okay, and this is a really fair way of doing it because obviously if I do that, I can't make you stop at a certain place or anything like that. If you want me to do it again, if you don't quite get one, do let me know. Did you get one? Nope. All right, I'll do it again. We can do this as many times as you want. Have you got one? Cool, now I want you to imagine that card in your head and I want you to imagine it in the pack and I want you to imagine it disappearing and vanishing from the deck. Can you do that for me, please? Cool, and if we look through the cards now, you'll see that... the card hopefully will not be in the deck. Is it? All right, what was it? The Ace of Hearts, let's have a look. The Ace of Hearts. The, the initial reason Richard created this was to be able to force a card or number of cards in a virtual situation uh, up to eight cards with this in a very fair way and in a way that wasn't a con contrite. Now, I've done things like cut deeper force and things like that and getting the audience member to do certain things. And I love all that stuff, but sometimes it can feel a bit contrived. And this is a kind of direct way, a really fair way to force cards on people. That's what it is. Up to eight, but it could be one. And it's based on the thing that we most of us know, which is, the, you know, going through the cards like that and getting someone to look at a card, which is great, isn't it, really? And it's getting away from that pick a card thing. It's like, OK, it's one, I suppose the idea is one more step to impossibility, isn't it? It's one more level to a possibility, a higher level. So, you know, they look at a card out of loads of cards and they've just got it in their head and you get the card now. So it's more of a mind reading thing, obviously, but it is arguably more magical because there's no card being chosen or, or taken out of the pack and which could be controlled. And I, I think it is different. 
and I've always liked it, and, and a lot of people liked it because I remember there was that for a while that David Blaine thing was on the cinema screens in the UK, which was him doing doing the thing of saying to everybody in the cinema, "Look at the card," and everybody going, "Wow, it's just incredible!" It, and people talked about it. It's a it's a really impressive thing, but when you perform that with a normal deck of cards or a slightly, there are many ways of doing it, a slightly gimmicked deck of cards, there's always a chance that it doesn't work. And what this does is it gets rid of that kind of doubt. It's always going to work because the cards that you want them to see, they're always going to see basically. So the way it works is in the initial routine, which is called forethought, and there are a few routines in this, all of them are great, I think. Uh, you get four audience members on a virtual situation with loads of other people watching to look at a card, each choose a different card of a different suit. So you say, right, you want one to pick a heart, one to pick a spade. And you get, with only one question, you get all of those four cards. So a lot of people worry about fishing and it, it's not really fishing because there's only one question in this. So it's, it's really direct, it's really strong. Now you can get the two of the cards normally by just saying them and asking, asking the question and you can get predictions, you can have the cards in pockets and you can you can find them in various different ways and ways so it's really really versatile so once you understand the concept you'll very quickly start going all right i could do this 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 and it becomes very very clear what you can do with it there are a number of other routines on here they're all kind of variations on the theme but they do feel a bit different one of the the second one is um split and what's called split focus which i really like actually which he actually performs in person on the download in the instructions and he's got uh he's in prop i think that's one he does in prop dog i think it is uh he's got two people and it's a similar thing one of them looks at a red card one of them looks at a black card and in this version he tells them what the red card is in quite a cool way actually again with only one question he gets to red card there, there may be two questions you might have to ask but it feels very natural it's very cool and he gives you some tips on how to do this as well it's very very simple very little memory work and um, with the other one, it can be any of the black cards and he gets it out of an envelope. And this envelope that he uses, you can either purchase or he has a bit on the download which very clearly takes you through how to make it, which is really, really good, actually. It's, you, there's a lot of value there in having that. And as soon as you see, you're going to want to make it and, he, and it's going to be very easy to do. So that's great. Uh, then you've got uh, Mirage. I don't, I'm not doing it in the right order. Mirage is the strongest bit thing in the whole thing, I think, where you, what, what he says is the strongest bit, and I agreed. When I saw it, I went, I want to go out and do that for a couple of reasons. It's very, very direct, but all of this stuff is, but really direct. There's like no questions or anything, and it's an open prediction, really. But importantly, they cut the cards, they put the card that they cut to on the table, then they do the same thing, they look through the deck, they look at the card. They get the card and then the card has vanished from the deck. And that's a very important thing that I haven't mentioned yet. You can show that the card that, they, that they've seen has, has gone from the deck. And then it's the one on the table that they've recently pulled out. Really, really strong. Couple of ways of doing it. And um, I think the way he does it is the best way, but it's not 100%. So you might want to look at the other ways. But anyway, you not much sleight of hand involved. Very simple. Out of focus is a kind of similar sort of thing but instead of the open prediction being on the table it's he's got an envelope and he says the one i've just mentioned they do exactly the same process you go right imagine the card that's in your head leaving the deck and ending up in the envelope you say what was your card they tell you you open the envelope and the cards in there vanish from the deck again sim similar but slightly different he's also got a tossed out deck that he's only got the performance of he says that the instructions are going to follow but once you see it once you get the concept you're going to be able to work out exactly how that's done and then you've got the facebook group where you'll be able to go on there and get loads of ideas that's what's happening now isn't it and these facebook groups are really valuable places because people really get out and geek out on these things and, and come up with all the different ideas but my feeling is that once you get the concept of this you're just going to be flying and it's very easy kind of well it is it's really easy to do it, unless you want to start bringing in different kinds of kinds of forces and things like that to get to where you want to get like in the the mirage trick uh, you're going to be totally fine. Pretty much everybody's going to be able to do this. The only slight caveat to that is, well, we go to the to the good points first. The good points is it's really strong. All of these routines are very stable. They're strong, stable routines, which means they're really easy to follow. They're predictions. They're, they're you, you know, you're dividing someone's card. There's everybody, they're not these kind of complex tricks. That, you know, it's not loads of filler here. There's four or five really strong routines, including the tossed out decks deck that 
really work for lay people. So it's really strong. It's really clever. The method is, I really, really like it. And I know some people say method isn't important. I think it is. I think if you like the method and you enjoy the method, that's going to be portrayed and communicated in some way. And I do like this. Uh, and it's well made and it's going to last you forever. And yes, you don't get the envelope with it. That may have been nice because it's involved in a couple of the routines, but it's not a major problem for me. The only real downside of this is getting your head around it. Um, but if you f follow my recommendation, that'll be fine. When he shows you how the deck is put together and what it is, I would watch that quite a few times until you really, really understand it. Till you could literally take this apart and put it back again. There is a bit of a setup in this, and he kind of rushes through it a little bit. And it's not saying it's not simple, but I kind of sometimes need things really laid out. And I'd like to, a few times for there to be a camera close up on the cast, kind of still on the cast. This is what it looks like, and really get your head around it as you're setting them up. And when he goes through the routines later, he kind of goes, and we're going to fill it up like this. And he kind of goes, and we're going to do that, and we're going to do that. And he kind of assumes at that point that you really know how it goes together, which is uh, it's fine, because if you watch that enough, that first bit, you will know. But I was a bit, I kind of went back to it a couple of weeks later and went, oh, and I got really confused setting some of the tricks up. I kind of forgot how they went together. So I would just make sure you get a solid understanding of the foundations of how this works, which isn't hard. Once you get it, you kind of go, oh, right, it's, it's simple. But, you know, immerse yourself in that. And then when you get to do the routines, you'll just be able to take certain cards out, put them in again. There are, like, the Mirage trick. It is Mirage, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm just checking I got that right, because I've been saying it quite a few times. <laughs> it would be terrible if I had to do it all again. Uh, with that Mirage trick, it's not that repeatable. Now, there is a way of repeating it, but it's a bit of a faff. So if you're doing tables... You, you're going to kind of have to stop, put other sort of things out and go back if you want to repeat that and you don't want to be overheard and you don't want it to be the same card. I've not really got an issue with this. I find that most times if I do it at every other table with the same card, I don't really care that it's the same card, but you, you just might want to be wet, aware of that. There's, there's a kind of not too much a repeatability of this and also the deck cannot be examined. Again, never a problem for me. Very rarely do people want to see the cards in a professional or a friendly setting and if they ask, I just say no, they're mine. <laughs> just say that. Uh, it's not very convincing or magical. <laughs> people tend to shut up when you say it. Uh, so don't take that as magician's advice, by the way. That's not a good way of doing it, but, uh, but I do. So just checking that hasn't, isn't any... Um, oh yeah, the one thing... Uh, I thought was nice was a lot of these are kind of non-contact so there might be a bit where they cut the deck but you can do it without all that he does a, a version where you know they say stop and he they instead of cutting the deck to put that card in that mirror street you can just cut it show it put it in your pocket or put it in your pocket and then do it as an open prediction and show it later so a lot of these can be done with distance which is really interesting at the moment for the reasons I cited before so that's good I, I think this is really solid oh and they're not bicycle cards and it's in the kind of deck that says force focus on it a pack so some people would probably prefer um, a normal deck but put it in a normal pack you've got at home because if you're going to buy this you should have normal cards as well I would presume so when you go out and perform it just stick it in a red bike deck they're not bikes but they look fine nobody's going to notice um, and it's good it's a solid trick it's what a gaff deck should be an easy way to do a trick that could be less guaranteed then it makes it more guaranteed and it makes it simpler and for those of you that aren't move monkeys you're going to be able to create really strong tricks and i love that kind of it's like the mind power deck that thing of look at the card got it in your head it's gone from the deck it's in my pocket brilliant and that's what you can do incidentally with the forethought and the double prediction and all that kind of stuff instead of using the envelopes you can just use your pockets and i've looked at that and played with that as well and it's brilliant so very similar to a sort of stand up mind power deck as well which i really like so uh, not much else to say about that. No, no negatives as well. It's good fun. So that's Richard Pinner, Force Focus. Use the links below. Thank you for sending that to me, Richard. And uh, please like and subscribe. Check out carbmagiccourse.com. Get your free spread cull download course at carbmagiccourse.com forward slash cull. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.